Alright, this is Dr. Both. Welcome back to some Kerbal Space Program. Alright, so here we are with our fully refueled lander that has been mining its fuel for the last 70 or so in-game days. Um, it was a little bit painful because I forgot to include any radiators, so the drills and the uh, converters kept overheating and stopping so there was a lot of time skips and a lot of keeping my shit from falling over because the drills touched the ground that said we are actually refueled and I guess 70 days I mean it's a long time but if you're going to go through all this trouble of putting people on the moon putting them on the moon for, or the moon Putting them on Duna for two months, a little over two months, is probably reasonable. Um, I'm too lazy to walk them over to the lab, but look how close it is. I'm sure they could go out, stretch their legs, ride the broken ass rover, and otherwise have had fun over the past two months, but it's time to take them home, so that's what we will be doing next. All right, so first of all, let's ditch the mining equipment. It has served us well, but it's time for it to go. I have bolted some separatrons to this, so hopefully this will be somewhat dramatic. Excellent. That was everything I hoped for. All right, and with that, we are free to launch. All right. I think it's probably time that we got going, so let's see. What do we need to button up before we go? Uh, probably put that communications relay away. Should be fueled up. Parachutes are gone. Can I repack those, I wonder? I should check. That's really cool. So because I've got Kerbals here, I can repack the chutes. All right. So actually, as a backup plan, I might be able to totally inappropriately slam this into the surface of Kerbin um, if it turns out the whole docking thing isn't going to work out. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, but I'm not sure I've actually got enough parachute to dock all of this mass, or to land and decelerate all of this reaction mass. Um, also, I don't really have a heat shield. All right, take off. Uh, four times speed, hence the lack of sound and ridiculously fast acceleration. Uh, I'm gonna use 4X a bunch just to save time so you don't have to watch all these maneuvers in the time they actually took to do. Probably. All right, nothing to it but to do it. I 
can't help but feel like I turned the wrong way. I think I turned west. So that's massively inefficient, but hopefully we'll be okay. Um, this is file that is under problems that NASA probably doesn't have. Alright, got our transfer, um, and the nice thing about the Poodle is these maneuvers don't actually take that long to burn, so let's go do that now. All right, so let's take a quick break from our Duna recovery mission and put a ship in orbit that's going to be able to meet our astronauts when they get back to Earth. Because remember, our return vehicle does not have re-entry capability or really enough fuel to attempt re-entry anyway. So we've got a vehicle atop this medium heavy lifter that can take our Kerbals back down to Earth. Um, and also, I'm going to use this launch to drop another communication satellite uh, into Kerbin orbit because, if anything, I've realized I probably need more communication satellites for future missions. So let's see how well this works. Would help if I released the docking clamps upon launch. Take two. So my launch stage is a, a mammoth with a little bit of solid fuel boosters just for that extra uh, acceleration off the pad. Then I've got a skipper engine for mid-stage and to boost us up into stable orbit. And then we've got some engines on a docking vehicle that will hopefully be able to get us where we need to go. So you can see I've got a little communication satellite completely uh, with no engines on it just up top to put into orbit along with this launch. All right, I was getting worried I'd underspec that because I really did not want to use the engines on board the docking vehicle to finish getting up into orbit. All right, now that I'm in a stable orbit, I'm going to ditch that communication satellite 
And I'm actually going to leave this here for now and until my astronauts come in and I figure out how I need to do the docking. But I'm going to use this to meet up with them and dock in orbit. All right, so here I am planning my encounter with Kerbin. And what I'm going to do is I've set my docking vessel as a target. And I'm going to tweak my orbit such that I can match the orbital plane. Um, so that will help make use of relative limited fuel I might have available in the docking ship. And it will mean that as long as I can get captured, even if it's in a not super pretty orbit, I will be able to dock the other ship with it fairly easily. So let's do my standard orbital tweaking, quarter, quarter orbit before the encounter, and try to get that orbital plane to line up as, as best I can. All right, I think that's gonna be as good as I can do, matching the orbital plane. Um, also, that's a pretty close approach to Kerbin. I'm pretty happy with that. Incidentally, really hoping I've got enough fuel to capture because if not, I'm super screwed. Although I'll drop a save here. If I don't have enough fuel to get captured, then backup plan, I guess, is to arrow capture, um, which will be sketchy. But let's see if we can avoid doing that because I don't have any heat shields. Oh, we did it. I love the poodle. The poodle is so good. Okay, I'm actually going to use the remaining fuel for another plane change to match the plane of our docking a little bit better. All right, and our return vehicle has done its job. It is now in a stable, nice orbit around Kerbin. So next up, it's time for docking. Um, so I'm gonna jettison some stuff and prepare, prepare this vehicle to receive docking. Goodbye, poodle. You did such a good job. So you notice I've got a set control from here to the docking port. So that means it will orient itself using the docking port as its uh, point of reference. I can turn RCS on and then uh, when I approach any other ship, I can switch back and forth and make sure they are pointing in the correct direction to line up with one another. All right, let's switch over to the other ship, which still has some fuel left, and prepare for our docking. All right, so I'm flying the recovery vessel. We've got to do some docking. So I need to set my other guy as target 
trying to catch up to him as best I can um, using what I've got left in this little skipper, and then I'll switch over to the docking vehicle zone engines. Normally the first thing I would do is uh, line the orbital planes, but I managed to do that using the fuel in the return vehicle. So I don't have to worry about that right now. Okay, so that's the rough alignment done. We're now in, in fairly similar orbits. Um, now I'm going to have to play around with uh, getting a close encounter. So because I'm in a shorter orbit, with a shorter period, I should be catching up gradually to the spacecraft, which is what I want. Um, when I have a close pass, then I'm going to try to match its velocity and then go for in for the final docking maneuver. Okay, so I've got a relatively close encounter coming up, 25 meters per second. So when I get, or sorry, 25 kilometers away. Um, so I, when I get close, I'm going to reduce my velocity relative to the target. And it's gonna be a little bit similar to how I did the landing two things on top of one another, which is I'm going to chase my retrograde vector to the anti-target or push my prograde vector towards the target. So let me see which looks easier. So this is not super efficient, but I am just going to fire my engines kind of towards the target to give myself a component of my velocity vector in that direction. So I'm kind of playing with distances and relative speeds. So I want my distance to get smaller without my relative speed getting too big. There are, there are clever ways to do it other than what I'm doing. You can, like what I was saying before about chasing your retrograde vector or pushing your prograde vector, that can be kind of tricky to figure out. Since I've got a lot of fuel on this stage, I think I can make this work um, just by pushing myself towards the target and then canceling out the relatively small amount of relative speed I'll have once I get there. Yeah, so I think if I steer so that I can, um, if I steer and fire, I'm pushing my prograde vector towards my direction, so I should be able to get it moving more towards the target more efficiently. Yeah, so you can see as I fire, I drag my prograde vector towards my position on the nav ball, and I want that to line up with the target as much as possible. So now the encounter is happening very soon. 
So now my priority is reducing my relative velocity, which will give me more time to actually make the docking work. And while I'm doing this, I can also chase the retrograde vector towards anti-target, which will help a lot. Yeah, so simultaneously coming up with maneuvers that reduce both are really important. And you can see the anti-target is running away because I'm getting really close to the target and my window is getting small. So I need to really fire the engines up over here. Also, my separation is now 100 meters, so I really need to freaking stop. I may be heading for a collision. Uh, maybe heading for a collision. My separation is 100 meters. Okay, everything is under control. Nope. Where's the target? Yeah, so, I mean, docking is not at all stressful. It's fine. Yeah, I think there it is. All right, so I've done the the uh, coarse docking approach. Now I need to do the the fine scale stuff. So let's do that next. All right, we're back. I have taken a break and reminded myself how the docking controls work. So in docking mode, controlling from my docking port, RC RCS should be on. And what I can do is I and K adjust my velocity vector up or down on the nav ball, and J and L bring it left or right on the nav ball. So what I want to do is I want to bring my prograde vector to line up with the target vector. H and N fire my RCS forwards or backwards. So basically increasing or decreasing my velocity. If you can't find your prograde vector, pointing at the target and increasing your velocity relative to the target is a great way to do that. Um, be careful because when the actual docking happens, you really want to be moving at something like one meter per second relative to your target. Um, so you can quickly lose track of how close or far away your target is. So get that velocity vector lined up and then slow it right down and maybe switch back and forth and make sure your alignments are right on both ships. So I'm pretty happy with that velocity vector alignment and I'm going to slow down. Okay, let's switch over to the other ship, see what that's doing. Okay, I've got that pointed towards the target. Uh, unfortunately, I'm doing this on the night side and therefore have no idea where anything is. Let me switch back. So you notice that my velocity vector, when I'm moving very slowly, has drifted away from the target. Um, and that's just because as I go around the orbit, especially if you're in a relatively low orbit, you'll find that the Earth moves your velocity vector around on a time scale that is, is definitely relevant to your docking maneuver. So you may need to do lots of corrections. The larger your orbit, the less this is an issue and maybe therefore the easier this kind of is.
Okay, I've got my vector lined up again. I'm gonna bring in a little bit closer, or sorry, a little bit faster, because I don't know where my dude is. But if I'm something like 100 meters away or more, then this will still take a fair amount of time. I really wish I could see the target. I don't seem to have eyes on the target. Okay, according to the map, we are going to collide, so that's probably good news, because that's basically what we want to happen, just in slow motion. So, I only brought something like 250 units of monopropellant. I did not bring that full tank, so it's not ridiculous, but you can see I've already burned through something like 80 units of monopropellant. Oh, and here we are. Here's our thing. All right. All right, this is our moment. Slow right down. So you can see how switching back and forth to adjust the orientation can make this a lot easier. Infuriatingly, when you switch back and forth, SAS gets reset, so you'll find yourself having to uh, redo that a lot. So you also don't want to collide at like zero, or the magnetic locks might not go on. I think the target should be something like a meter per second, or actually probably half a meter per second works just fine. Slow and steady, not rushing. That's looking pretty good. Oh, pretty happy with that. Come on, do it. Dock, do it. Yes, excellent. All right, docking is successful. All right, so we have successfully docked. Let's bring this whole thing home. I'm gonna deorbit everything together, then, or I'm gonna transfer the kerbals, then deorbit everything together and separate the docking out so that we don't have to uh, leave any space debris. Sadly, that means our wonderful Duna return mission, the gnome, will end up burning up and not get fully recovered, but such is life. All right, crew has been transferred. Let's do our deorbit burn. I'm going to do this deorbit relatively inefficiently on purpose because I actually want to have just basically no fuel left for landing. Because then the more fuel I've got left for landing, the harder my heat shield has to work and the harder my parachutes have to work. So the more fuel I can burn off before landing, the better. All right, time to say goodbye to the gnome.
Also, let's try to bring them down in the ocean. That seems like a better idea. And again, with the burning off as much fuel as possible situation. I'm actually going to fire the RCS forwards to help just burn off some of that fuel before the entry. Um, I incidentally, I may have brought way the fuck too much fuel on this mission. Also, there's a clear argument to be made about bringing maybe not nearly that much monopropellant. Basically, what I'm saying is I could have designed a much lighter and more efficient um, vehicle for picking the astronauts up. I'll have to try to do that next time. Incidentally, I did not even need a heat shield. I had so much extra fuel to slow down that I did not even need a heat shield. Like, I haven't used any Abloner, which is ridiculous. So, way overbuilt. Could have done a much better job with this guy. probably don't need to gear down for a water landing. And yay, drogue shoots for not ridiculous amounts of deceleration. Main shoots should catch next. And there's my main shoots catching, and you can see I pull like two or three Gs. If you do this without drogue shoots, if you've, you've probably done this before, you can get like 15 Gs easily when those main parachutes go. Incidentally, not sure why my guy's so lopsided. Whatever, I'm sure it's fine. And yeah, we have brought two astronauts to the surface of Mars and returned them on two launches. So I'm pretty excited about that. The next project, um, I need to put a bunch of communication satellites up everywhere. Um, that I might just do off screen just so I have those out. But I was talking with uh, Forrest Acumen and we might do some lathe return. Um, we may do that as a competition, or we may work together to build something that can do a lathe return mission. I think it would be cool to do a space plane on lathe as a lander return, kind of Apollo style, with a rendezvous and or orbiter around lathe. Uh, the space plane also has the advantage of air-breathing engines do work on lathe, which is the only other place in the Kerbal solar system they do work other than on Kerbin. So that could be really fun, but engineering space planes is really tough because they have to still work with or without fuel in them and balancing out that center of lift versus center of mass when you have fuel drain can be kind of a huge pain. So we may be doing some experimentation with that, trying to build a space plane, lathe, lander, return vehicle, um, along with an orbiter it can dock with that's capable of transferring and then the uh, 
nonsense transfer ring that's going to make all of that work. So yeah, we'll start thinking about that sometime soon. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to bask in this successful mission, and I will see you next week.